Hi, I'm Ann Mutchler, Executive Editor for EDA at Semiconductor Engineering. I'm here with Zdenek Pickerel, CTO of CODASIP, and we are going to discuss the issues with coding for RISC-V, debugging, and touch on LLVM and related topics. Zdenek, welcome. Thank you for being with us today. Really nice to be here with you. Let's look at this whole area from the top down. There have been a lot of changes happening with the way that we design chips today. And that really has started with the fact that scaling is no longer working. Can you talk about that a little bit from your perspective? Sure. So if we speak about scaling is failing, then you know, if you look at a couple of laws uh, or rules, if you will, that were uh, you know, applicable in the past, like you know, Dinar scaling or Amdam's law, these are not working anymore and they are either stopped or, or stopping, like, like you know, Moore's law, depending on how you look at it. So we need to look how to solve the problem of increasing performance demands a bit differently. There are a couple of different ways how we can deal with that. We can look at the you know, new technologies like optics or carbon nanotubes or these sort of things. But honestly, these are really great technologies, but they are a bit far away. So we need to do something differently. And in our case, what we believe in, in Codasip, is in fact doing heterogeneous compute. So having a blocks that you know, does one thing and then and the, the one thing is done really perfectly, really optimally, and this is what we what we focus on. We are enabling the custom compute in effect that is actually actually enabler for the heterogeneous uh, solution. Then that's going to have an effect on the performance when we move to this new way of doing things, right? Could you talk a little bit about that? that that's exactly the point. So um, if you look at the demands from, from the industry. Uh, Everybody is looking for a higher uh, performance yet at the same power budget or even lower power budget because everybody would like to stay on the battery a bit longer. So we need to look for this sort of solutions and the way is that you have a device or unit in your device that is really optimal in what, it's, uh, what it is doing. So for instance, speaking of the CPUs, you would like to have a CPUs that are really optimized for the workload uh, that they are parsing or computing. And uh, even though the general compute CPUs are really fine for certain applications, in many other applications, uh, those are not really applicable because you maybe pay in the terms of the area or even the power. And the performance is not great either because you might lack some of the workload compute because instead of having one optimal instruction or maybe some combination of instructions you need to go and use tons of general purpose instructions which is bad really for uh, if you are looking for a power decrease or, or energy decrease uh, you know, performance increase on the other side so looking at the solutions that are really tuned to what you need is the way an enabler for heterogeneous compute how has risk five played into that idea of heterogeneous compute? That's actually a really nice question because the answer is that RISC-V fits perfectly here. One of the things that I like about RISC-V is uh, besides that it's open standard, is that the ISA is uh, the designed in a very, modu very modular way. It means that it is split into certain modules, such as module for the integer arithmetic or the modules for floating point or, or DSP and so vector and so on. So you can pick and choose whatever you want. But this is the first layer. The second layer is the custom instruction layer or custom compute layer. So not only that this file enables you to do so, but it's even encouraged to do so. There is a certain way how you should do it and the specification talks about that. And therefore it is really a key point that enables innovations and differentiation. So this five is indeed a really good player in this field. We need to run obviously code on the CPUs today. And that's, that's a challenge. Can you talk about 
what it is that the engineering teams out there, they need to know about running code on their CPUs and developing that code and better ways to do that? You know, CPUs run the code, right? So somebody has to create that code. And nowadays we use high level languages like you know, C, C++, whatever. And you need to have a compiler for these languages that actually translates the code to the binary machine code that the CPU then can run in the end of the day. And this is a key point, like you need to have really good infrastructure, really good SDK that enables you to go from the text C code to uh, the binary ones. And in this process, you are looking uh, for uh, really high compilation optimizations uh, for either code size, because in, in the case of the small devices, the code size matters, or a performance uh, or anything in between. So having a compiler that's uh, really good at this job is critical. And, uh, you know, this is what Risk V has as well. So there are, there are a bunch of compilers out there that you can look at. So there is a GCC, there is LLVM as well. Those are open source ones, but there, there are also a couple of proprietary ones like IR, for instance. Uh, very well, every single compiler has, uh, you know, good things and bad things as usual. And, uh, but the common goal is the same, you know, to take the code that you, as a user right, as a designer of rights, and then compile that to, to the binary code. Now, in the case of RISC-V, the compiler is already there for the modules that I mentioned at the beginning. So the ones that are so-called ratified, they come with the uh, modules that are present in the compiler already. So the GCC uh, has it, LLVM has it, like support for the floating point operations or support for the vector, for instance. Uh, but in the case of the custom instructions, uh, it's not the case because the custom instructions are a new one. Those are the innovative instructions that maybe are not implemented in that case. And then you need to have a good tooling that enables you to do this uh, compilation in a quickly and in a really nice way. Can you draw that out a little bit for us? Sure. So in the case of the uh, compiler, basically either a GCC or a VM, we can split that to three parts. There is a front end, which I mentioned, uh, which uh, takes the input in a C or C++. Let's make it simple. Basically, there is a text as the input, and it produces uh, usually something that we call intermediate representation. So it is something that the front end produces. It's basically a representation of the written code in a, in a text file in some object, objects oriented uh, data structures. Then we have a mid end, time to times called optimizer. And the task of this guy is uh, that it reads the IR and the input and it does mostly target independent optimizations. So you can think of constant or variable propagation loop unrolling, uh, these, these sort of things. And the output is again, uh, the intermediate representation. The last guy is the backend and uh, the backend takes the, the IR and it does target dependent optimization. So register allocation is done there, uh, different uh, uh, you know, people optimization might be done there as well. So we are speaking mostly about the target dependent optimizations. The output of this one is, uh, if you look at the LLVM, for instance, is either assembly uh, or it can be object file as well. The, the, let's let's uh, look at the object file. The, the object file is then linked uh, by the linker, which is another tool in the chain uh, with the, uh, maybe other object files. And in the end, we have the executable that then runs on the processor uh, in the end. This scheme, uh, you can find it quite uh, common because uh, if you look at pretty much any compiler, you can always identify these three blocks there. And where do those compilers come from? What is the source for those? Uh, there, there are a couple of uh, projects in the open source world. So we can look at the GCC, we can look at the LLVM. So these are compilers that are maintained by the community. 
And there are also uh, some compilers that are uh, developed by commercial companies, like a compiler from IR, for instance. So there are a couple of sources uh, that uh, you can look at and can take whatever suits you the best. I also wanted to go more into depth on LLVM for people maybe who are new to this area, for engineers that still are getting up to speed. Can you explain what is LLVM and what does that look like for the design engineer today? LLVM uh, is, a, is a bigger project. Uh, in fact, uh, it uh, hosts a couple of uh, interesting ones. Uh, so. Of course, the, the most important one is a compiler that we have shown here. Uh, but it is not only the compiler, because there are other tools you usually need if you try to compile things. So, for instance, there is a linker that's part of the LLVM project as well. And there is obviously assembler and disassembler that's part of the LLVM. But there are also other things like debugger, for instance. So there is mm -hmm. a LLDP that still lives under the LLVM umbrella that uh, is a is a new debugger uh, that you can you can use for or not only for risk five talk a little bit more about debugging in lvm how is that different than a design engineer might be used to with other methodologies speaking of the debugging probably the the, the most uh, not well known is a gdb because everybody i guess knows that it's a uh, so it's not that different, uh, even though the interface is much improved in the case of the LLDB. So there is a new interface, which is much more friendly. But then the debugging itself is more or less the same. So you have a way how we can break um, the compilation flow, meaning that you can set the breakpoints or stop points. Uh, you can do stepping, you can see variables, you can see registers as well that allows you to inspect uh, the software running on the CPU. And in the case of the LLDB, similarly to the other debuggers, you can either do it on the simulator or you can do it on the real hardware, either FPGA or real device. So there are ways how you can connect to those devices uh, and uh, you can enjoy the fact that you can uh, you know, see the content, you can see what's happening there. And uh, similarly to the other debuggers as well, you can live either in the command line interface or you can uh, have the GUI that uh, uses uh, LLDB. And it could be Eclipse, it could be VS Code as well. There are a bunch of GUIs that, that leverage the LLDB. So I also want to ask about what we do differently with LLVM. And I know that it's possible to use LLVM as a baseline. Can you talk through what that means and how you approach that? As I mentioned at the beginning, in the case of RISC V, uh, you can use already existing or ratified instructions and extensions. So then you can take baseline LLVM compiler, which you can download from a, from a GitHub, and you can just configure it in a way that, okay, I'm compiling for my device because I know that uh, it contains uh, RISC V uh, with a certain uh, instruction set extensions. This is fully okay. You get the executable in the end and you can run indeed on your device. In the case of uh, heterogeneous uh, compute or custom compute, where you need to have uh, custom instructions on top of the standard one, then the vanilla might not be the, the perfect match because you would like to have automation in the compiler. So then the new instructions or custom instructions are used as well. And by the way, this applies to the debugger as well. So if I'm debugging the code that's compiled with the custom instructions, I would like to see the new instructions during the debugging as well. So even though the vanilla is really good, in the case of a custom compute, there is a, one more step that has to be done. And this is what we uh, do in Colossus. Can you talk more about that and maybe draw it out a little bit? Okay, uh, so the, the step uh, that I mentioned at the beginning, the one more layer, if you will, is that we need to have a way how we can teach a compiler to use new instructions automatically. So what I mean by that is that if I have a C code that is exactly the same as you know, it was before, then if I use uh, the new compiler instead of the 
vanilla on base one, I can see use of the new instructions. So I don't have to change the code at all. I, you know, I would like to rely on the automation in the case of a compiler. And this is what the CodeScript shines in because we have a solution that uh, enables that. The key point here is that it starts with a processor description in a language that we call CODAL. So this description of the processor holds the instructions a definition. So it has all instructions and it has also behavior of these instructions. So this is the single source of truth, right? So it has all of it. So it has the, the uh, ratified extensions and you can write also your custom instructions in it. So this is like you know the single source. Then this is the input for EDA tool that we call Codacid Studio. This is a powerful tool. So it takes a codal as an input and it produces two basically two sets of outputs. One is SDK and the other one is AGDK. Now the SDK consists of a LLVM compiler, a linker, assembler, but it also has a simulators or executable models. It differs uh, in different flavors, I would say. It can be cycle accurate, can be instruction accurate. It has also profiling tools and so on. The second one is called HDK for hardware development kit. And it then it contains the RTL, um, the verification environments, test benches, Random programmers, uh, random program generators, and the other tools that are needed for integration or implementation of the processor. In the context of the LLVM, we stay obviously here. And uh, the way how it works is that we have a, a way how we can extract the instructions from the code description. And then we have a really smart generator. And we also enhance LLVM in a way that the new instructions are inserted into the LLVM, and then the output LLVM, the final one, the generated one, is then able to use these new instructions together with the already existing ones automatically. I mean, this combination is quite powerful because once again, you don't have to change a C code at all. You can rely on the automation. You can rely on the compiler that is generated uh, automatically based on the description that holds the instruction set in it. So Zdenek, you have this automation in place. So how does that impact the performance and the code size, which is always a concern for the development team, right? Exactly. And the way how we you know, solve this problem is that besides that we take the, the base LLVM, we've also added uh, our own optimization passes that improves the performance and the code size. These improvements also add a support for more advanced DSP instructions, for instance, such as zero overhead loops. So we have that in, uh, on top of the uh, vanilla LLVM. We have also means how even users may enhance a generated LLVM because uh, we keep that open, open to the, to the customers. So then the customer may even uh, change the generated LLVM if he or she First of all, needs that and knows how to do that. But the point is that the need is really low because if we compare the generated LLVM against the, let's say, vanilla LLVM or vanilla GCC, even for the cases where we speak about ratified extensions only, then we can see the data that actually, uh, thanks to the additions that we've done, thanks to the, our uh, knowledge that we put inside of the generated uh, compiler, we can probably be, have better results in terms of the performance and the code size. Exact numbers, you can find them in the blog post that you can find on our web pages. So Zdenek, thanks so much for your time. Is there any last parting thoughts about where people can go next and connect with you on this? RISC-V is really great technology. It uh, enables innovations quite a bit. Uh, so we shouldn't be afraid of that. If you are looking uh, for more data on whatever topic, it can be compiler, it can be debugger, it can be anything else, feel free to look at our, our web pages. We have a really good white papers or blog posts with a lot of technical details in it. Uh, so you can find information there. 
And last but not least, uh, there is a Risk Five Summit coming in November this year. So for us, we will have a present there. So feel free to just stop by, say hi, say hi, or you know, ask any questions uh, uh, there. Thank you. Thanks so much for your time.